Uh, good morning to you, gentlemen. <laughs> boy, on, oh boy, <laughs> you're the prosecutor. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, this guy's original story is not going to fly. So, what kind of legal charges could this guy face, and how do you prosecute this guy? Life imprisonment without parole. <laughs> 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 no, he'll face a number of charges, Arthel. He's looking at criminal trespass for jumping onto the uh, tarmac and running on it. He's looking at reckless endangerment for endangering himself and the fellow passengers. You know, so there'll be an assortment of charges that are lodged against him. And uh, ultimately, though, we'll see what kind of disposition. At this point, they're felonies. Perhaps they'll reduce them down to misdemeanors. But you can't have this, atti this attitude. This was beyond a melt. Down. This is like a behavioral <laughs> implosion. The wow. guy's rude to passengers. He's opening up chutes. We can't have this vigilantism on the airways. So, Keith, how do you defend <laughs> this? This is certainly more than just a bad day at the office. Huh? It's easier to defend Slater than it is against Joey Jackson. <laughs> Look, he is the modern day Jerry Maguire. Remember the Tom Cruise movie? Yes, he told everybody where to go, show me the money, took the goldfish and left. This is a fairly defensible case. You have to keep in mind that the passenger herself committed a federal crime at the outset of the flight as well as at the conclusion of the flight. What passenger? The passenger who interfered with him doing his job. It's a federal offense to interfere with a flight attendant. People have to keep in mind that flight attendants are essentially safety marshals in the air. He gave her instructions, she refused to listen to him, and in fact she too can be charged with assaults for having hit him with the bag or the overhead that door is in dispute. at the outstart. <laughs> but you know what, and Keith raised a good point, but that goes to mitigation. In other words, I thought what ultimately happens is one thing doesn't excuse the other. Now, we expect that airline people would exercise interpersonal communication skills, and notwithstanding the fact that people are rude, people are obnoxious, people give you a hard time, you have to employ some self-control. <laughs> so then if that's the case, um, Keith, does JetBlue take on any sort of responsibility here for kind of what Joey's talking about? Look, there are certain rules employees have to follow, and they have to make sure that these guys are not going to have this kind of a break, break meltdown. You know, it's, it's interesting to, to look at that environment, that atmosphere, that, that job force, because you're dealing with individuals who have various personalities, dealing with the public in a very controlled, tight-knit environment yeah. where there's many, many rules and regulations. And you wonder, should the airlines be doing something to make sure that these guys don't blow their top and lose steam like this? <laughs> what, 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 Joey? We hope it's a controlled environment. Apparently, in this instance, it was <laughs> far from a controlled environment. This guy went, <coughs> at, he was out of control. Joey, you just behave yourself and don't have a bad day at work. <laughs> okay? Man, oh man. <laughs> Joey Jackson <laughs> and Keith Sullivan, thank you very hey, much. Thank guys. you, Arthur. Right. Right. And leave the beer at the bar when you guys check out. <laughs> I'm telling you. He grabbed one we'll or two. Right. Right. Which one? We'll Taking it on the chute. Well, he had two hands, so I figure it was Double two based fisted. on that day. <laughs> All right, now it's your